Amen, amen. Well, good morning, church. So good to see each of you this morning. And we wanted to do a, a Sunday. It's just a little bit different. I don't really have a sermon to preach, more of a sermonette, because I wanted you to hear some of the different testimonies of people who spent the last four months reading through the New Testament and seeing how God has worked in different people's lives, seeing the way that God has moved. It's been um, really wonderful. So I hope that you've been blessed by some of those stories, and I'll be sharing a little bit more uh, along those lines of those testimonies this morning. If you have your Bible, I'm going to ask you at this time to turn to the book of Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. As you're turning there, I just want to make mention that you know, we got to worship God through music. We got to worship God through hearing testimony stories this morning. Another way that we worship God here at Fifi is through the giving of our tithes and offerings. So if you're here with us in person, you can drop your tithe or offering out at different boxes as you leave the sanctuary this morning. If you're worshiping with us online, you can give through our app or through our website, or you can give um, by mailing in your tithe or offering. Just another way that we continue to worship God. And so, just to kind of set the stage a little bit for this, this passage and this little sermonette that we'll have this morning, is Paul is traveling, doing his missionary journeys, and he's been going from place to place, and he goes to this place called Berea. And what I want us to just focus on for a few moments is the Bereans' response to the word of God, the Bereans' response to the word of God, and how Paul contrasts that with so many other people. Because ultimately, what we want to make sure of is that we are not just hearing the word occasionally, but that we're actually living out the word, right? And we're seeing that the Bible changes how we live changes our relationship. In fact, there's this research group, it's called the, the Barna Group, and what they talk about is they talk about people who are called Bible engaged. And in that category, people who are Bible engaged, what they say is that your relationships and your choices are shaped by Scripture. I like that definition. Your relationships and your choices are shaped by Scripture. Instead of allowing the culture to tell you how you should live, instead of allowing people around you to tell you how you should live, instead what we do is we go to Scripture and we allow the Lord to direct to us and dictate how we should live, right? That's a really, really important thing. And one thing that's very interesting is you talk about that, this, this idea of being bi uh, Bible-engaged people, well, just so you know, during the pandemic, their research showed that people who consider themselves Bible engaged dropped from 27.8% of people who say they read God's Word and are actually shaped by it, all the way down to 22.6% during the pandemic. So you had this huge you know, over a 5% drop of people who, in the midst of the pandemic, as they kind of got away, maybe from church, got away from getting in God's word, you see this drop in people who were Bible engaged. In fact, during the pandemic, in contrast to the years from 2019 to 2020, what this research found is there was a, a decrease in people who said they read, read the Bible daily from 14% of Americans down to 9% of Americans in one year, a 5% drop in people who read Scripture daily, a 5% drop in people who said the Bible shaped their relationships and their choices. And what they said is they said this was unprecedented for from 2011 through 2019. So during those nine years of this study, they said that, you know, the average was 13.7% being, you know, reading Scripture daily, Americans. And that dropped 5%. They said it was an unprecedented drop during the pandemic. And that's why it's so important for us to get engaged 
in Scripture and to spend time in it. That's why I was so encouraged by all of these, uh, by all these different testimonies. People were saying, hey, we are reading God's Word because we believe that God's Word is living and active, don't we? And so with, with those kind of ideas in mind, what we understand is that, that Bible engagement can change us. And let's see how the Bereans treated Scripture. So if you would please stand in honor of the reading of God's Word this morning. I'm going to read just three verses from Acts 17. I want to read verses 10 through 12. And this is what God's Word says. As soon as... As it was night, the brothers and sisters sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. Upon arrival, they went to the synagogue of the Jews. The people here were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, since they received the word with eagerness and examined the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Consequently, many of them believed including a number of the prominent Greek women as well as the men. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we love you so much, and we are so thankful for your word. We are thankful that your word is living and active. We are thankful that your word gives us everything we need for life and godliness. We're thankful that your word shows us your love for us. Your word tells us the truth of the gospel, that you loved us so much you sent your son to die on the cross to pay for our sins. So God, I pray that your word would shape us, your word would change us. God, that we would be a church that stands firm on your word. I pray, Lord, you'd speak to us now. It's in your son's name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. It's interesting, it talks about these people in Berea, right? How they're different than those in Thessalonica. They not just received the word with eagerness, but they examined the scriptures daily to see if it were so. Do you ever like feel like you know something pretty well and then you meet somebody, you're like, okay, I really don't know anything at all? Do you ever feel that way? I just want to show, if you guys don't know, my kids like to get me fun socks, right? Some dads get ties, I get socks. I want to show you my socks this morning, okay? My, now, my socks, if you can't tell, that's R2-D2, okay? That's R2-D2. My oldest son, in particular, loves Star Wars. All right, and so I've always thought, like, I love the story of Star Wars. I think it's great. I've been a fan. I always thought I knew a decent amount of Star Wars. Okay, then I moved here. And I don't know if you've met some of our staff members, okay? But Andrew and Kyle or Tara, man, they make me feel like a novice, okay? I'm like, I enjoy the story. Luke Skywalker is awesome. I love Han Solo and Chewbacca, right? This is fun. But all of a sudden, they'll be like, Zach, you know, if you really want to understand The Mandalorian, well, you've got to go back and you've got to watch this one animated series called like, Star Wars Rebels. You've got to do this and this and that. And I'm like, whoa, this is hurting my head a little bit, right? I got invited. I had a lot of fun. And um, I remember even with, with Justin and Amy and, and it was Andrew, we were all going to, you know, the, the midnight premiere of Star Wars. I was like, this is, this is fun. But I felt like a casual fan compared to those who really knew the ins and outs of Star Wars. Does that make sense? It was, man, I've got, I've got a, a basic surface level knowledge. I can throw out Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader's bad, right? But you start getting to the, into the deeper levels, and then all of a sudden I'm out of my depth. Because I enjoy it, but I am not... Man, a die-hard fan like some people. And what we see here in Scripture is what, what, what Luke is recording for us. He says, you know, they're going on this journey, and Paul goes, and he sees these people in Berea, and guess what they are? Die-hard fans of Scripture, right? It is not just that they're waiting to hear it eagerly, but then what happens? 
Then they receive the word with eagerness, and then they go back in groups, and they examine God's word. They don't just take the preacher's word for it, right? They go back, they get together in these groups, and they start to study God's word to make sure what the preacher said lines up with God's word. I love that. Now, I'm going to promise you, I'm going to do my best to always communicate God's word clearly. But I also want to know that you're going back and you're saying, you know what, I'm not just going to take his word for it. I'm going to dive into God's word myself. And we see that's what the Bereans do. They are engaged with Scripture. They receive it with eagerness, and then they go and they examine it daily. I love that video montage of different people who'd gone through this New Testament grounded reading plan together. What's really interesting is, you know, we had 97 different people that signed up to be in these, in these T groups. They said, I'm going to commit to going online through Marco Polo, and I'm going to, you know, share about my insights. I'm going to do this. We're going to work together. I love so much David Jennings as he shared. He said, it's kind of like the New Testament church where you get together and you talk about God's word with one another. And you help say how it applies to different things. So what's really interesting, in that video, there's, there's two different people. One of them, if you guys don't know Sandra, um, Man, what a story. She was the one who talked about how her husband had passed away, you know, a year and a half ago. She moved back here to the St. Louis area and got involved in our church and became a member in the midst of the pandemic. And she said this, you know, her transformation group was so helpful for her in getting connected into the church. She said, I loved reading through the New Testament. She was like, it just did wonders for me. I loved hearing her story and encourage you meet with her, talk with her a little bit, and see how God is working. Or also, you saw maybe, I don't know if you recognize Becky Holcomb, who Becky was was Maggie's neighbor, and as they were talking in the midst of the pandemic, and their kids were playing together, you know, Maggie was sharing with her about this reading plan, and Becky's like, well, I want to do that. And so they started reading together, and then Becky came to Maggie with some questions, and Maggie said, well, hey, we've got these tea groups, and so Becky signed up for a tea group. And, you know, I remember as we had this sign-up, and everybody's asking around, who is this Becky Hulk? We had no idea, right? So I just prayed, stuck her in a group, and now she's connected with that group, and God is moving and working and growing. So incredible to see how God is working through all of this. And hopefully what you saw as you heard these different testimonies, you saw that engaging in God's Word starts to change and transform us. And it especially helps us realize that God is placing opportunities to share his word all around us, isn't he? As God is giving us those opportunities, we need to be aware of them. The pandemic affected Bible engagement. It affected those who were daily reading scripture. That's why it was so important for us to spend this spring just saying, we're going to get into God's word. We want to be like Bereans. And why do we want to be like them? I love to say, receive the word with eagerness. They examine the scriptures daily. See if these things are so. They, they're spending time, they're diving into God's word. But then look what happens, verse 12. This is why we engage God's word. Verse 12, consequently, many of them believed. God's word is living and active, and as we spend time in it, it's going to reveal to us the need for a Savior. You know, we started off this journey back in January, and the very first passage we looked at was from 2 Timothy chapter 3. And as Paul is issuing this charge to Timothy, he says, but as for you Continue in what you have learned and firmly believed. You know those who taught you, and you know that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are able to give you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. This word gives us wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And then he continues, all scripture is inspired by God 
it's profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness. So the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. We want to be a church that is Bible engaged, that has our relationships and our choices shaped by God's word. But the only way that we can stay Bible engaged, the only way that we make sure that our relationships, that our choices are shaped by God's word is for us to make that commitment, to have God's word be paramount. So I just want to challenge you. Maybe you didn't participate in the New Testament challenge. Maybe you did. You know, right now we just started Isaiah last week. We're doing a chapter a day this summer. I want to challenge you, jump in and be a part of that. Man, it, maybe you, didn't, you weren't part of a transformation group this spring. You can go online, you can sign up to be a part of a transformation group and read that scripture in community with other believers and see how God might move and change and work in and through our church. It was so encouraging to me to hear stories of how God was working and I believe that if we stay engaged in Scripture, God is going to continue to use our church. Church, it's my prayer that we will be like the Bereans. We'll receive God's Word with eagerness, and we'll daily go and examine the Scriptures. So that it's not culture, it's not other people, nothing is dictating our relationships and our choices except God and His Word. If this contains all we need for life and godliness, then we should, as a church, be engaging with it every day. Let me just share what's really important says, as they engaged scriptures, many of them believed. And if you're sitting out here this morning, you've never made that decision to trust in Christ. I'd love to talk to you. We can walk through the scriptures and show what God says about the problem that we all have with sin and how we're separated with, from him and how he provides a solution to that problem by sending his son to die on the cross for your sins and for mine. Then the Bible says, if we simply repent, turn away from our life, believe in him, trust in him, follow after him, that we will be saved. I'd love to talk with you about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. So if you're joining us online, you can message us. Connect at fifibc.org or comment on our Facebook feed and we can talk about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. You can meet me in the Welcome Center right after the service and we'll talk about what it means to be a follower of Christ. Church, let's receive the word with eagerness. Let's examine the scriptures daily. Let's see people walk from death to life as they hear and understand God's word. Let's be like Bereans. Let's go to them in prayer now. God, we love you. We're thankful for your word. We pray, God, that you would be with our church. I pray, God, that we would continue in your word, that we would stay engaged with it, God, that we would be like Bereans, eagerly receiving your word. God, I pray right now, Lord, if there's anyone in this room, anyone watching online that hasn't yet made a decision to follow you, God, I pray that they, Lord, that you draw them to yourself right now. God, I pray we continue to be a church that is grounded on your word or engaged in scripture. We love you, Lord. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.